Hello class, welcome to Numerical Methods and Analysis. In this lecture series, we'll be discussing on how to find a single real root of algebraic and transcendental equations. We'll go first to defining what a root is, then have a general overview of the methods for finding the root of an equation. Okay, so solve for x. As you may have easily remembered, the solution is x equal to negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So the famous solution for our quadratic equation. The values of x here are called the roots of the equation. They represent the values of x that make the quadratic equation equal to 0. Thus, we can define the root of an equation as the value of x that makes f of x equal to 0. For this reason, roots are sometimes called the zeros of the equation. From our previous lecture video, we derived a model equation for the terminal velocity of a falling parachutist, where velocity v is the, in the dependent variable, time t is the independent variable, the gravitational constant g is the forcing function, and the drag coefficient c and mass m being the parameters. If the parameters are known, the velocity as a function of time can be directly solved because v is expressed explicitly. That is, it is isolated on one side of the equal sign. Now, if you wanted to find the drag coefficient of a parachutist of a given mass, to attain a prescribed velocity in a set time period. How shall we do that? So as many of you may think, we can just simply rearrange the equation such that we isolate C on the left side of the equal sign. You know? So say, this thing in a, pause this video and try to isolate C on the left side. So now, if you did try, you'll find out that it's difficult to express or isolate C to the left side of the equation. In fact, it's actually impossible to do that because C is expressed implicitly. And that actually presents a real dilemma because many engineering design problems involve determining the parameters of a system in order to ensure that it performs in a desired manner. And thus, engineering design problems often require the determination of implicit parameters. It is in view to this kind of problems that we employ numerical methods. To solve the problem using numerical methods, we re-express the equation by subtracting um, V from both sides of the equation. And that would result in this one. We subtract V on the both sides. Then we'll have this one, um, this expression. So F of C now is equal to G over M over G times M over C times this one minus um, V. The value of C that makes our function equal to zero. So that's the root of the equation. And that also represents the drag coefficient that solves the design problem. So there are, are particularly three methods for solving. Um, and first would be the graphical method. So let's try this problem. Determine the drag coefficient needed for a parachutist of mass 68.1 kilograms to have a velocity of 40 meters per second after free falling for 10 seconds. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So as shown previously, the model equation for this design problem is this one. Substituting the values results in so this expression. The value of C that makes this uh, that satisfies this equation is the root of the equation and also the drag coefficient that we are looking for. 
a simple method for obtaining an estimate of the root of the equation, um, f of c equal to this one, is to make a plot of the function and observe where it crosses the x-axis. This point, which represents the x value for which f of c is equal to zero, provides a, a rough approximation of the root. So let's try to plot f of c. And to do that, we can just substitute various values of c to the equation and solve for the corresponding value of f of c. And this is summarized in this table. The resulting curve, um, as plotted here, crosses the x-axis between 12 and 16. Okay, So visual inspection of the plot provides a rough estimate of the root at um, probably at c equal to 14.75. The validity of the graphical estimate can be checked by substituting the value of c into the function. So try to substitute that one, and it will result in f of c equal to 0 0.059, so quite close to 0. Another way to check um, the, the validity is to substitute the value of c into the equation of terminal velocity, which gives v equal to um, 40.059 meters per second. So that's also close to 40 meters. Right? So therefore, graphical method can give us a, a rough approximation, rough estimate sa ato ang root. Uh, okay na for, for start. Now, take a look at this graph again. Kinindari. What do you notice? At c equal to 12, f of c is positive. At c equal to 16, f of c is negative. So we can see that the function changes sign on opposite sides of a root. In general, if a function f of x is real and continuous in the interval xl to xu, and f of xl and f at xu have opposite signs, that is, f at xl times f at xu is less than zero, then there is at least one real root between xl and xu. The numerical methods which exploit this fact of the change of sign are called bracketing methods. As the name implies, these methods use two initial guesses for the root which must quote-unquote bracket or be on either side of the root. In contrast to um, bracketing methods, we have the open methods. For bracketing methods, the root is located within an interval prescribed by a lower and upper bound. Assuming that the root is indeed within the interval, such methods, atom bracketing methods, move closer and closer to the true value as the computation continues. As such, bracketing methods are convergent, that is, they move toward the true root. In contrast to that is the, are the open methods, which are based on formulas that require only a single starting value of x or two starting values that do not necessarily bracket the root. As such, they sometimes diverge or move away from the true root as the computation progresses. However, the advantage for open methods is that when, the, when they converge, they usually do so much more quickly than their bracketing methods. So, bali, pas pas. To summarize the differences, um, you have this um, table. And that's it. Remember that you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start in order to be great. Thank you.